This is the Motorola Razr Plus 2024 Disassembly. This phone is also known as the Razr 50 Ultra in different regions. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. We'll start off by removing the SIM tray. Looking at the SIM tray, we can see a black rubber gasket around the opening. Now heat needs to be applied to both the outer screen as well as the bottom cover using either a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath and then a pry tool can be used to pry them off. I prefer to use a hairdryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. There's a Phillips screw which is holding on the cover over the connector for the screen. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and prying them off. So you won't need to take apart the phone to replace those. Here's a look at the back of the screen. And here's the vegan leather back cover. The graphite film over the motherboard needs to be peeled off, and that helps to transfer heat. Eleven more Phillips screws need to be removed. Now the battery cable as well as the rest of the cables can be disconnected from the main board. The LED flash is located on this cover. The flex cable for the telephoto lens needs to be disconnected from the main board.
The motherboard is a dual layer design board. On this side, we can see the 50 megapixel primary camera, and this camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone on the top corner, the autofocus and light sensor on the back, and some copper tape on the shields. The SIM reader is located on the other side. The proximity sensor is located above that. And next to that is a 32 megapixel front facing camera. There's also graphite film and thermal paste on the back shields to help transfer heat. Once that's peeled back, we can see an aluminum plate on top of the RAM, which is seated on top of the processor. Here's a look at the thin aluminum plate. And here's a better look at the RAM, which is seated on top of the processor. To remove the battery on the top flip, there are no pull pouches to help you pry it off, so you're going to have to apply some isopropyl alcohol around the sides of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. Here's a look at the first battery, which is 1050 milliamp hours. The telephoto camera is held on with some adhesive, so if you wanted to replace that, just apply some heat and pry it off. And the same goes for the earpiece speaker, which is located on top. For the volume buttons, the flex cable is located over here, which is held on with some adhesive. If you need to replace that, you'd have to pry off the flex cable from the frame, as well as cut out and remove the rubber gasket, which seals it inside of the frame. For the fingerprint sensor, that also has a cure in place rubber gasket, so if you had to replace that, you would also have to cut out the rubber gasket in order to be able to lift up and pull out the flex cable from the frame. There are seven Phillips screws on the bottom which need to be removed. The bottom battery cable cannot be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. The black latches or locks need to be lifted up in order to unlock and release these flex cables. And here's a look at the wireless charging coil and an FC antenna. On this bottom cover there's also an antenna line drawn, which is that light grey color line. Here's a look at the other side. Now the same goes for this battery, there are no pull pouches to help you pry it off, so you're going to have to apply some isopropyl alcohol around the edges of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. And here's a look at the 2950 milliamp hour battery. The flex cable for the folding screen needs to be peeled off from the subboard. The subboard can now be lifted up and removed. Taking a look at the subboard, we see the primary microphone located underneath this covered shield. Here's a look at the other side. Looking at the charger port, we can see a red rubber gasket around the opening.
This is the bottom speaker assembly. The vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner, which is held down with some adhesive. To replace that, just apply some heat and pry it off. For anyone worried about accidentally inserting the SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, on this phone you don't need to worry, since both the filters and the microphones, on the bottom and top, are seated above the hole so they won't get damaged. So if you need to replace the folding screen, once you have the flex cable for the screen disconnected, as well as peeled off from the subboard, you would heat up the plastic border on the front and pry that border off. And then you'd apply heat to the folding screen to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then you'd pry the folding screen off from the frame. Now I'm not gonna pry this folding screen off since I don't wanna risk damaging it due to the fact there's a high chance of damaging the folding screen by prying it off. And also if you don't use the correct adhesive to reapply the folding screen to the frame, when you fold and close the screen, you can crack or damage the folding screen. So that's another reason I recommend for people who are planning on replacing the folding screen to go with one that comes with the frame pre-attached. It'll definitely make your job a lot easier. Now these flex cables which connect the bottom half of the phone to the top half are routed through from here to this side. There are covers holding them in place in addition to the screws as well as some seals on top of these screws. So you have to first peel off the seals over the screws in order to be able to remove the screws and those covers. These black screws also have black rubber like seals over them. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 5.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, power on the phone, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.